Saturday, April 23rd in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I will be at the Better Discourse 4 event. Come out, see me, get your tickets, betterdiscourseevent.com, and see speakers like Stephen Destiny Bonnell, James Lindsay, Blair White, Nuance Row actually getting invited to something for once, friend of the channel Mike Harlow, and newly announced people Lauren Southern and Andrew from Don't Walk One Productions. Obviously, this is a stacked, loaded group of people, and you definitely should get your tickets. And, surprise speaker, the best one of all time, my absolute favorite, will be there as well. And, of course, I'm talking about Taba'a, and, of course, Taba'a. One of the things that's troubling to a lot of people out there in the world, not just people here on the internet.com, is the appearance of utter lack of principles. And the thing is, everybody has their own hypocrisies. Everybody has contradictions in their logic, their ideology, or whatever. That's just who we are as people. We're not fact-based. We are largely emotion-based. However, and I do mean how and then ever, there are certain instances, especially with content creators on the internet.com, where they very publicly take a stand against something, something very specific, and to see them flagrantly violate that stance that they took that was a moral imperative that supposedly they were willing to sacrifice everything for is worth note. That's what we're going to talk about today in this H3 podcast highlights video that is about the quarterings old channel. And no, this ain't going to be about the claw machines. This is going to go much, much further into what we're actually talking about. But before we get into that, we need to talk about your weight, your weight loss strategy, Keto with Justice. It's a sponsor transition to Keto with Justice. I spoiled it earlier. Many people struggle to lose weight after their 20s. This is because every decade, your metabolism slows about 4% a year. So by the time that you're 50, it slowed over 10%. That's a huge deal. This is one of the reasons why I'm glad to have partnered today with Keto with Justice. This amazing powder can help speed up your metabolism and put you into a fat burning state known as ketosis. It's super easy to use, one scoop in the morning, and you're good to go in your keto state. It works basically like the principles of the keto diet, and you can get this amazing powder at ketowithjustice.com for an amazing discount. That's ketowithjustice.com manage your weight more better rr, rr, rr. so the video we're going to talk about today is on the h3 podcast highlights channel and for those of you who don't know h3 h3 ethan klein is not a fan of jeremy from the quartering he doesn't like him he's gone after him multiple different times he's done a whole two hour long thing where he dressed like a judge in this very unfunny way to target the quartering because he is not a huge fan of jeremy from the quartering and that's understandable i've met jeremy i think he's a swell guy he looks looks like a grizzly bear one of the funniest things of all time that happened when I met him which by the way isn't one of the funniest things of all time but it's one of the funniest things that happened when I met him is that there was another guy who looked just like him and I thought that he was his brother and the guy told me no this is just how people from Wisconsin look so yes it is a state full of grizzly bear people just like Jeremy from the quartering everybody be scared of the state of Wisconsin because eventually when they figure out a way to get out of that state they might run amok all over the country but the thing is, is that it's okay to not like somebody. It's okay to go after somebody. It's okay to have a tit for tat back and forth between content creators on the internet.com, especially since these content creators are relatively similar in size. And even though Ethan's channels are bigger, the quarterings views are definitely up there. Now, this is likely because Jeremy puts out about 14 and a half videos every hour. So that causes his channel just to get so much traffic in the algorithm. You know what you're doing, Jeremy. But they have comparable audiences and in view counts per video, especially when you compare to the highlights channel, the quartering is trouncing him. So it's all fair game. It's all fun. I would never go after people for doing the response video thing, because if I did and that was not a thing on the Internet.com, I would literally not have a job. But there's a point where the hatred, the vitriol, the anger in Ethan Klein just bubbles over into this realm of personal attack where he just undermines everything he allegedly believes in, things that he's taken stances on, things that he claimed that he's willing to lose money on. And this is what this video actually is. And that's what we're going to go over today. So we're going to start it off. And I will highlight the very key moments in here that are the definite problems for Ethan and his alleged principles. Uh, we got some quartering memes. You know that's going to be good. Man has four claw machines in his house. 
Does he? He's such a fucking weirdo, dude. So the setup for this video is false. It's the idea that the quartering has a secret channel where he reviewed claw machines and he was trying to hide this, but Ethan Klein uncovered this channel. This isn't a secret. People have known about this. I didn't know about this because I don't know Jeremy like this, but this is a very public thing that he did. And again, his face is attached to it. And while we all could laugh at the channel trailer talking that Jeremy's doing, that way of talking like, hey guys, are you excited? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button aren't you excited to be here that's not what ethan focuses on that's not what this is all about and by the way if you were ever wondering why i don't have a channel trailer for my channel it's because the way that people typically talk in channel trailers i find incredibly off-putting so i could never bring myself to do that and if i ever do that in the future then disregard this statement right here because i have sold out and the future me is never going to admit to it hey there i'm jeremy and you've come to that part of youtube where you might be wondering how the heck you got here together with my beautiful- So wait, is this- You've never seen this before? Uh, this is before he started grifting. Now, I also want to point out that Ethan, who basically copies and pastes other people's ideological views in place of his own because he's not capable of thought, something that he's proud of, he very famously said, don't even think about it when it came to CDC mandates and anything related to the virus. But he's using the term grifter just like all these lefties use grifter because grifter is just a catch-all insult for these people. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't hold any weight. It's just the thing that these people say, like, you're doing a thing for money, even though we're all out here on the internet.com making content for money. And by the way, there is nothing wrong with making money on the internet.com. I know that's uncouth for a content creator to say. I know we're all supposed to pretend that we're doing this for charity and coincidentally money flows into our bank accounts every single day single month we're supposed to pretend that if we have sponsors that we have those sponsors just because again charity or we're conducting a social experiment to see if you buy them and the money is just an afterthought to pay for the cost of the social experiment and all the researchers that we're developing but again we do this for money this is the job ethan klein quit his actually edited hard-working content for a lazy podcast because the podcast is more lucrative. By the way, I have been told by my reps that I should start a podcast and convert this show into that, but I don't want to do that even though that appears to be where the money is at, the real money. So in case I sell it in the future and I do a completely different show in podcast format, you'll know it's because I wanted to buy something nice for myself or for my lady. Before he was banned from uh, magic tournaments, before he was, uh, okay. before it all before his villain origin story. So I just want to point out that this is Ethan's producer that we talked about before on our previous video about H3, and he was the guy that is employed by Ethan that was telling H3 how much of an alpha male that he actually was and how these right-wingers should be saying Ethan is the most alpha of the alpha males. If we're talking about social sexual hierarchy, I have, I'm like, have a good job, right? I have a wife that I've been in a loving relationship with. I have a, I have a family. So I'm fat, basically. Does being fat make me a beta or gamma? Well, also, like, publicly calling out another person with a huge platform, a bigger one than your own, and going in on them. I mean, again, I, I don't think any of this is real anyways, but couldn't you argue that that is alpha energy? Like, you're not backing down? That's one of the guys who is obsessed with grifting and talking about how people are doing everything for money. The guy who was like, Ethan, my boss, the guy who signs my paycheck, you're a real alpha. That That's who we're dealing with right here. So great team, dynamic duo right here. Totally, totally A+, plus, first class all the way. It's right. just a simple claw machine Before reviewer. Before he was rejected <laughs> in, the, in the seventh grade and and went on a rampage against all women. Yeah, so the quartering before he went on a right-wing grifting rampage, he was trying to be like a carnival games gamer. I mean, this dude is... Huh. <sighs> Okay, just watch. So the quartering, despite the fact that he is the size of a grizzly bear, he is huge, he is covered in hair. If you saw him in your backyard, you might call animal control because you worried he's going to go through your trash and eat everything. 
actually is a gigantic nerd. What Ethan is breaking is the news story that Jeremy from The Quartering, the guy who talks about pop culture and comic books and video games all the time, is actually a nerd in other ways. He actually likes claw machines and carnival games and the games that you would find in places like Dave & Buster's or Chuck E. Cheese. Wherever you go to play these arcade games, The Quartering likes that thing and supposedly, allegedly, we need to get mad at Jeremy from The Quartering because he liked this so much he tried to turn it into a YouTube channel and at some point this YouTube channel got 100,000 subscribers. Not sure if that was before or after he sold it, so haha, ha, The Quartering had a goofy nerdy hobby and he turned it into money just like The Quartering seems to do with every goofy nerdy hobby that he has. Okay, just watch. Hey there, I'm Jeremy and you- Just stop. Oh my god. He's, he's being out. serious. He, he hit us with a hey there. Oh yeah, no, I, I've seen this video in the past when we were looking hey up there. quartering stuff, and uh, it's like a different, different guy, whole different vibe. Hey there, have you heard about white replacement theory? Have you heard about white replacement theory? So this is where your brain being fried by leftist politics really comes through incredibly strong. He's talking about the quartering. Again, somebody that you could talk about as a nerd, somebody that you could talk about as a person who, as an adult, plays that Magic the Gathering card game, that game that's basically Yu-Gi-Oh! before it was Yu-Gi-Oh! And he was so into it that at one point he actually got banned from Magic the Gathering, but he's still into that hobby, even though that hobby personally rejected him because that's how much he likes nerd stuff. This guy, somehow, some way, in Ethan's mind, even though he talks about nerdy stuff, he doesn't really talk a lot about politics. I'm sure he has his own political positions. I've talked to him, he has his own political positions is a guy that's allegedly pushing white replacement theory. Because again, when you're a far leftist, when you're around a far leftist and they cook your brain, the only thing that you can go to over and over and over again, time and time again, is labeling people racist, labeling people evil white racist if they're white because they're evil and they're white and they're racist. When has the quartering ever talked about immigration? Maybe there's a video out there somewhere where he talked about immigration, but I've never seen it. I've never heard about it. I never would even think to ask Jeremy from the quartering his position on immigration, but this is the thing that Ethan has got in his head this week, so he's just going to project all that nonsense onto him because this is what he's concerned with, and he has no basis for his attack on the quartering. Yes, this is nerdy, but it's like wholesome nerdy content. So what's the point of dragging this up? Also, it's not a secret channel, so there really is no point of dragging this up. Poor. <laughs> hey there, I'm Jeremy, and you've come to that part of YouTube where you might be wondering how the heck you got here. Together with my beautiful wife and our best friend, Brandon, we're about as- Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> obsessed with the arcade as anyone, specifically claw machines. So obsessed Watch with that, that that we've already bought four different machines and have them in our houses. Look, the overexcitement, the hey, hey, I'm super excited about the thing that I'm talking about, and we're, we, we, we did it, and the jump cuts and all that, that's all fair game. That's all fine to make fun of. I have nothing against Ethan for mocking the quartering for this. In fact, the thing that I'm actually most upset about when it comes to mocking the quartering for the content of his videos is that Jeremy is in front of a green screen that he did not key out himself and Ethan is so lazy in his podcast that he didn't use this for anything at all. Hey there, I'm Jeremy and you've come to that part of YouTube where you might be wondering how the heck you got here. Together. It's not that difficult. Somebody gives you a green screen opportunity, you take advantage of it, you do something fun with it, you have a little bit of creativity instead of all this laziness that Ethan just appears to exude from every part of his body. Sport. Who, uh, is this for kids? House? He's making this for 12 year olds. It sure seems We like have it, yeah. claws in our houses. Would you like to come over and play sometime? We also have candy. And you can sleep over too. So as you can see right here, Ethan is coming up to that edge. He's coming up to the edge where he's about to do the thing that he has condemned specifically Keemstar for doing. And you might think, Ethan, after going after Keemstar for labeling somebody wrongly a pedo and talking about how wrong that was and talking about how YouTube should ban Keemstar and how Keemstar sponsors should drop him and going after his sponsors, you're not about to walk into that same trap. Sure, you're hinting at it. Sure, you're implying it. But you're not going to go down 
that same road when talking about somebody like the quartering just because you don't like him. Obviously, you condemned Keemstar specifically for doing this when he knew it was wrong just because he felt like the person that he was talking about had insulted him after for sure he knew it was wrong. He falsely accused an elderly streamer of being a convicted pedophile. Ugh. I mean, how does he ever even live this one down? Do you know what his evidence was? Wait for it. He looked like the guy in the photo. Yeah, that's it. Oh, poor Keemstar. He's the victim of poor Tony's harassment. The unacceptable the way that Tony is harassing poor Keemstar, who is, he, he is just headed up to here with Tony. The guy he accused of being a pedophile publicly. How does G Fuel still sponsor this guy, by the way? G Fuel brought to you by false pedophilia accusations. God. Chug it, G Fuel. Get it now at gfuel.com. Just Destiny is a YouTuber who made the very regrettable decision of using underage girls in his thumbnails. Keemstar took that and ran with it, insinuating that he is a pedophile with zero evidence. Do you yeah. touch kids? Oh my god, really? But, but do you? Um, do you touch kids? We're not playing at home. We record our journeys as we travel across the country trying to win as many prizes as humanly possible. We'll also show you how these machines work, what to look for, and how to win. And while we're not clawing, we're going to show you how to win massive tickets at a ton of different arcade games so you can get that super sweet loot that you... Super sweet loot. See, uh, I wish he went down this road. You know? That's more wholesome. It's quality content. Yeah. More pedo vibes, honestly, than wholesome. <laughs> no. More pedo vibes, honestly, than wholesome. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not getting wholesome. No, no, no. Well, knowing what we know about him now. Right, right, right. You know, he's not exactly Mr. Rogers, is he? <laughs> you don't want to be his neighbor. No. Why? More pedo vibes, honestly, than wholesome. <laughs> no. That's Ethan Klein to a T. That's Ethan Klein to the maximum. That is H3H3 H3 Productions and what people cannot stand about this person and his podcast. He didn't have to take it there. He could have just made fun of the quarterings over excitement. Like I said, keyed out the green screen and all that stuff. But instead, he goes out of his way to accuse the quartering of being a pedophile to mention that in there when he talks specifically about how that's never acceptable, that's inappropriate, and Keemstar should be banned for doing so. He was hitting up YouTube in order to censor Keemstar, in order to stop him, allegedly due to the fact that he was doing this to another person. And what does Ethan Klein do when this guy is somebody who insults him? What does Ethan Klein do when it's somebody that he feels the same way that Keemstar felt about that other guy? He immediately goes to the exact same spot because this is a man with no principles at all. And that's what people can't stand about him. It is fully on display right here. That's who Ethan is. What a total buffoon. My pet vibes honestly then <laughs> no. seriously you can't make this stuff up now i've talked about multiple different times about how people on the internet.com who talk about the safety of children and protecting the children constantly and they say stupid ridiculous things like you know what there's a lot of things that i can handle but when you hurt children that's when it gets personal for me are cringy as hell and are bringing nothing new to the table. Obviously, everybody wants to protect children for the most part. It's a position held by 99% of the population. Even child predators are against other child predators for the most part. So when people take their moral stand against that, I always cringe a little bit and I'm like, okay, why don't you actually talk about something controversial? Why don't you actually talk about something that's in dispute? Why don't you actually attach your name to a position that actually has some consequences for you attaching your name to that position? But to do that, to be that person, to be the guy who goes out of your way to say, I am morally against this. I don't want to be on the side of this. This is wrong. This is horrible. And then to not only do it yourself, but then to have your little cronies, the people you pay to agree with you, all chime in and forward that narrative is unbelievable. That's what Ethan Klein's doing right here. And again, I know I'm emphasizing one line of dialogue really quickly, but this is Ethan's shtick. This is what Ethan does. Ethan says, you should be banned for doing this. And here he is doing it because you know what? He doesn't like the quartering very much. So another thing that I noticed, and again, if you were going after this in a way that was fun and not because you were a bitter person lashing out against the world due to your own insecurities, you would point out that Jeremy is clearly reading a script during the course of this video and is super unnatural. Nothing comes off as more unnatural than you looking down at a script and then hamming up that excitement. That's stuff that you can make fun of Jeremy from the quartering for. And Jeremy, you know what? You know I love you. You know I appreciate 
appreciate you. You know I think you're a sweet guy, but here's the thing. This is all fun, fair stuff to make fun of in general. Go ahead, become part of the Clawstruck crew and get notified each and every time we upload yeah, a new channel, super fun so, video by uh, crushing that subscribe button today. I mean, come on. Come on. But when you take it two steps further, and the first step is making it personal, making this a personal attack on this person because you dislike him, not because you're trying to make fun of him in good faith to have a little bit of fun, poke fun at the guy. And then you take it even further than that and you start accusing him of crimes, crimes that you have condemned other people for randomly throwing out the allegation for accusing and demanded that they be banned over. You're ridiculous in every way and you've just shed all your principles. You shed any level of dignity, any level of trust, any level of respectability that you could possibly have you have no consistency ethan you have no principles this is what people can't stand about you and you could say that these are all the nazis that are leaving your audience these are all the racists that are leaving your audience all the sexists that are leaving your audience but that's just not the case these are people who are observing your behavior and how disgusting you've become as a person and leaving due to that. Wait, whoa, whoa, do most expensive teddy bear in history? I think that's his wife. I've never seen what she looks like. I mean, not, I'm not judging her looks. I just want to know who is this woman who's spending, who decided to spend her life with Jeremy. Another way you could tell for sure that this is not in good faith, this is all about nastiness, is that I just watched this video clip where the logo for the channel comes up. And honestly, it's a pretty good logo. Credit where credit is due to Jeremy and his graphic design team. Whoever came up with this, it actually looks pretty sleek, pretty impressive in that regard. So again, if you were doing something more in good faith, if you were trying to have fun, you would throw in the compliments where well-deserved, and then you would throw in your attacks and you're making fun of the person for when they're cringe and ridiculous. But here we go, Ethan getting into the quartering's wife's appearance, because again, there is no boundary where he does not like it if you cross it, that he will not cross himself. Simple, wholesome content, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, just a vlog about a hobby they have. I think that's that's fun. that's great. His wife seems nice and normal, from what I can tell. Go back to this, dude. You were doing well. Look, it had over 100k subscribers had on this all. channel. He had it all. Yeah. Well, if it wasn't for immigrants trying to replace white people, maybe he wouldn't have to have made. <laughs> made the quartering so what's funny about this in a bit of a meta way is that all these people are telling jeremy from the quartering to go back to this claw shark thing go back to this content that has more effort that they like better even though this is a bad faith criticism it's also one of the things that people say to ethan klein over and over again they want him to get off this low effort podcast this uninteresting podcast where ethan is unfiltered and back to the edited ethan where we could actually see somebody who's changed up through editing to be a respectable person so the irony of this projection which might be unconscious by ethan and everybody on his podcast is not something that should be understated uh oh women are amazing aren't they like we truly just they like the fact that there's a woman out there for jeremy is just it's just a beautiful story yeah, like that's a, it, that's a positive spin you could put on it like women are just amazing so ethan completes this cell phone this self-destruct sequence that he is just perpetually on with a whole bunch of talk related to jeremy's wife he keeps talking about her he keeps bringing her up he keeps talking about how he wants to see how she looks and all these different things that are wildly inappropriate and of course like all the other things that ethan can't help but harp on these are things that would bother him and do bother him when you talk about it in relation to him. If you remember, one of the big issues, one of the things that started him off as all angry at Joe Rogan, other than the desire for attention for going after Joe Rogan, is the fact that there's a clip from Joe Rogan's podcast where he's talking about a woman that's outside in an outside event wearing a double mask and he's laughing at her on his podcast. It turns out that woman was in fact Ethan's wife, Ela Klein. And here's the thing, and I know a lot of people on the internet.com that like the quartering, that want to defend him, are going to take this opportunity to go after Ethan's wife, Ela, and feed into what he already doesn't like. But you really shouldn't do that. Let me explain why. First of all, Ela basically made Ethan the success that he once was on the internet.com. Back then, when everybody says, I used to love Ethan's videos, he was so good in those small doses, those edited doses. She was his editor. She was the person that was putting his best foot forward. So a lot of the content that many of you have enjoyed in the past was actually due to Ela. On top of that, 
Credit where credit is due. This woman left her country, Israel, to marry Ethan Klein when he had no money, believed in him enough that they lived broke until he made it, and they're still together to this day. I don't really want to be on a channel where I knock a solid marriage like that. That is clearly due to the fact that these people care about each other and support each other. I can have all my differences with Ethan all I want. I could have all my differences with Hila all I want. But I'm not going to attack their marriage or go after Hila's appearance in some shady, like, cringe way. Just because I want to prove a point and defend the quartering because Ethan was talking about the quartering's wife. That doesn't make any sense. I would be as unprincipled as Ethan Klein if I did that. On top of that, I got a lot of conservatives in my audience and a lot of people that are considered more traditional than me that are trad cons to the max. And it's really inappropriate for you guys to look at a marriage that is based on a solid foundation and attack the woman in the marriage because you don't like her appearance for whatever reason and think that Ethan should be marrying somebody who would obviously like him only for the money or some other purpose. It is an absolutely wonderful thing to meet the person that you're serious about before you start these channels, before you get any kind of notoriety, because you know for a fact that, that person cares for you for you. The quartering met his wife before he did any of this stuff. I met my girlfriend before I did any of this stuff. She actually bought me my first camera in conjunction with one of my family members. They split the cost to help me start this channel. And I will always appreciate them for that. And this weird thing where people talk about conservatism and family values and not being a simp. But everybody should be dating some OnlyFans style person that's only interested in you because of your money. That's ridiculous in every way. Everybody calm down when it comes to Ethan's wife. Talk about Ethan's personality, Ethan's contradictions, Ethan's lack of principle. Because that's far more interesting and it doesn't give him the cover that he wants in order to get out and obfuscate the criticism against him. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. If you like this video, you can show me by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. You can follow me on all my social medias. You can support me via the support links in the description box of this video. This has been me talking about Ethan having no principles at all whatsoever. Till next time.